Michael's not here. So it's just going to be me for this video. But I still hope you enjoy it. Anyways, hey the YouTube, Vigor Stringer here. Now, it is official. The WrestleMania season is over. And as you guys know, if you watched my whole entire rant with my friend Michael on the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, I was literally having the lowest of lowest expectations for WrestleMania. I literally thought that this was going to be the worst WrestleMania ever. I thought this was going to be worse than 27, worse than WrestleMania 9, worse than probably any WrestleMania. And surprisingly... This WrestleMania was actually good. This WrestleMania did deliver. Yes, it probably had the worst build-up to a WrestleMania that I think I've ever seen. But it did deliver. I don't know how, but it did. So congratulations, WWE. You didn't you made your WrestleMania not suck like I expected it to. So now let's start talking about WrestleMania 31. The I'll start with the kickoff. It opened up with the Fatal 4-Way tag team match. The tag team champions, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd, versus the Usos, versus the New Day's members, Big E and Kofi Kingston, and Los Matadores. Now, I was just like, okay, this could be like an entertaining like 10-minute tag team match, and that's what it basically was. It was just an entertaining 10-minute tag team match. And it was definitely a good match. It was good for Mania, but definitely wasn't as good as the last kickoff Fatal 4-Way for the tag team titles at WrestleMania 30. That one was definitely a lot better. But I still enjoyed it. There were still a lot of good things about it. I'll probably give that match mm, a B-. minus. I'll give it a B-. minus. Next up was the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. They, like, like, at the last minute, moved this match into the kickoff. And I really don't understand why I thought they could have, like, instantly put that in the show because they did a stupid segment that bet that's why they cut it out of the regular show i'll get into that later i'll get into that later don't worry it's not, i'm not having a huge rant about the royal rumble not why am i saying royal rumble wrestlemania but it's just one tiny thing that pissed me off but anyway the andre the giant memorial battle royal it was entertaining i don't think it was as fun as last year's but i still thought it it was going to be good. Now, I really did think that this was going to be the match that we'd see Sheamus return, and I thought that he would come and win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, but he didn't. Sheamus didn't appear at WrestleMania, and I was thinking that either he was going to be in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, or for some reason I thought he'd enter himself in the ladder match or interfere in the ladder match and start a rivalry with someone. But Sheamus didn't appear at WrestleMania at all, so maybe he'll return tomorrow on Raw, hopefully, because I miss Sheamus. But this Battle Royal... Uh, a little disappointing. Now, I was kind of pissed off at this match. And, um, here are the reasons why. Two words. Big Show. I am so sick of Big Show. I am so fucking sick of Big Show. Respect living out of the Big Show. He's done great things for the entire professional wrestling business. And not just WWE, for also WCW, any other wrestling place that he has worked with. He's done a great job. But, God, am I sick of him. I am so sick of Big Show. Because... Um, at WrestleMania Access, they had um, this whole NXT tournament, and whoever won gets to be put in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania. And the winner was Hideo Itami, or AKA in my eyes, Kenta. And I was really happy that Hideo Itami won. And I was like, what if he wins the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal and comes to the main roster? Do it. Fucking do it. Eh, but no. He got KO punched by Big Show. Pissed me the fuck off. Pissed me the fuck off. Now, when I was coming into this match, I thought the winners could be either. Unfortunately, Big Show. If Sheamus came in, I thought it was going to be Sheamus. Ryback, I thought, was also a huge candidate. Or I know where Curtis Axel will just, like, come in and do Axel Mania. Let that live wild. No? Okay, whatever. I love you, Curtis Axel. <laughs> and also, Bo Dallas returned to the WWE from his... I can't remember where he had an injury. I think it was like a leg, maybe arm, shoulder. I don't remember. But he was back at this weird goatee and the stupidest thing. But it was so fucking funny. Bo Dallas eliminated himself in the Battle Royal. He eliminated, I can't remember who. I think he eliminated like Heath Slater or someone. And then he just like was in the corner. And then he just jumped out and started running around doing this. Bo Dallas is such a freaking idiot. But I love him. <laughs> you know, it was really, really funny. Now, I was coming to the conclusion of the Battle Royal. Kane had just been eliminated. There were people like Goldust was still in there. Miz and Mizdow. 
Um, Big Show, Cesaro, and I can't remember who else. <laughs> but Ryback was eliminated by Big Show. And then the final three were Miz, Miz Dow, and Big Show. And I'm like, okay, please have Miz Dow win this Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Or at least just have him eliminate Miz. And so, yes, that's what happened. The, the Miz got eliminated by Damian Miz Dow. It was so... So awesome. We knew it was gonna happen, but seeing it was just aw oh, awesome. I loved it. Just seeing him beat the to see him throw him out of the ring, the Miz try to come back and Miz Dow just punched him out of the ring again. I'm like, ha <laughs> yes, Miz Dow finally turned face. After all this stupid build up, we kept on thinking it was gonna happen probably for about three months now, but it never happened. Finally it happened at WrestleMania. So good thing it happened on the grandest stage of them all. Now, then I really thought that Damian Miz that would make an upset and win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which many moments I thought he was going to do it. But no. Big Show wins the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. God damn it! Why? If like if you were gonna have him win, you should have just had him win at WrestleMania 30, because first off, he was much more over because he was a huge fucking baby face. And two, he was wearing the ring gear just like Andre the Giant, and his he was wearing a stupid blue camouflage outfit. And he's one of the most hated people in WWE right now. Why would you have him win then? Like, that's fucking dumb. That's fucking stupid. You should just have him win last year because it didn't do jack squat to Cesaro. It didn't do shit for him. Like, you thought it would lead to a huge face turn since he had just, like, did the whole Cesaro swing on Jack Swagger in the pre-show after their Fatal 4 tag team match. This is at last year's WrestleMania. He picks up the big show. Throws him over the top rope. He wins the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Gets the trophy. He then becomes a Paul Heyman guy. Still remains a heel. And then afterward, nothing fucking happens with him. They completely ruined Cesaro. And not, well, now he's he's got the tag team titles. He's doing okay. But still, you fucked it up with Cesaro. They completely fucked it up with him. So why not just give it to Big Show the first year? Because it would have been a lot more appreciative for him. And if Big Show was since Big Show was happy winning the match, you could tell... People didn't give a shit as much because, first off, he eliminated everyone's favorites. He eliminated Mizdow and Cesaro and Hideo Itami. So we really were pissed that Big Show won. And all we wanted to do was see him get eliminated. But he won. He won. Yeah, great. I fucking hate it. I was so mad. C- minus for this battle royal. Um, besides, like, I, was, I really, was really, really happy seeing... Miz Dow eliminating The Miz, I thought that was awesome. And seeing Hideo Itami in the WrestleMania stage, I thought was great. But besides that, not fun. Because Big Show, fuck you. <laughs> and I still love Big Show, but just I hate him right now. I can't stand him currently right now. I just can't stand him. But now, the opening match was the ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, this was probably one of my most anticipated matches for the night. Because I had my, my three, close to my three, my, I think coast my top three favorites. Daniel Bryan, Dean Ambrose, and Dolph Ziggler. And also had great superstars such as Luke Harper, Bad News Barrett, Cody Rhodes. Not Stardust. You had, great, you had such great six superstars and then I just put R-Truth in there for no fucking reason. <laughs> and R-Truth, yeah. He didn't do jack squat in this match. He started the whole thing. He was like on commentary for every week, stealing the title. I think they just want to do that from saying, at least you're a part of some build-up. But our truth you're not going to do anything in this match. Because, remember, you're afraid of heights, so you can't climb ladders. Then why'd you put me in this match? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> but I, this was a crazy ladder match. There were plenty of cool moments in the beginning. All it was was just complete chaos. And it was a lot of fun. I just wish it got a little bit more time. The map, like... This is one of my biggest issues with every single match that happened tonight. None of the matches have really had enough time. A lot of the matches seemed kind of short for me. Like, not even one match in this pay-per-view was, was even 20 minutes long. Not one single match. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal in the kickoff was longer than probably... More than half of the matches in WrestleMania. You could have the opportunity with these type of matches to be classic matches. They decided to screw up. They were good matches. A lot of them were good. I'll get into that later. 
Fucking Noah Elliott. I'll just stop talking right now. But I really did want to see Daniel Bryan win the WWE. Not WWE. Whatever. I wish. Uh, Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar. Since Lesnar resigned, make that fucking happen. It's one of my it's like my top five dream matches. Before like before like there was the chance, I just wanted to see it. Hopefully, we can see it. Please. <laughs> but anyway, I really wanted Daniel Bryan to win because like he made a vented WrestleMania last year, wins the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, then you absolutely fucking treat him like shit in the Royal Rumble match and get him eliminated when he was in there for about 10 fucking minutes. At least give him something. Give him, hand him the Intercontinental Championship and make him relevant again. May, not make him relevant, the Intercontinental Championship relevant again. And Daniel Bryan did win. Now, I would have been happy for a lot of the other superstars if they became champion or Bad News Bear retained. I really just did not want our truth to win. That was the only person I really didn't want to win. Also, I didn't really want Stardust to win either. Either any of the other five people I would have been completely fine with. I still have been a little mad that Daniel Bryan didn't win, but at times I really thought that Dolph Ziggler was going to win. And I'm like, okay, he's a six-time, that'll make him a six-time Intercontinental Champion, so he could break Chris Jericho's record. That would be, be pretty cool. Go ahead. I fucking love Dolph Ziggler. He's another underrated superstar. And Dean Ambrose, I thought I had a good chance of winning, but Luke Harper fucking powerbombed him through a fucking ladder. Not like just jumping onto the floor like what Sheamus did with Sin Cara. Luke Harper was in the ring. Picks up Dean Ambrose and just throws him off and goes through the ladder. And he landed very awkwardly. And you could tell that Dean Ambrose was hurt. And it was awesome. <laughs> and there was plenty of crazy moments. Dean Ambrose jumped off the ladder on top of everybody. Luke Harper died in front of everybody. Daniel Bryan hit a running knee on Luke Har on Not Luke Harper, who was it? But like it got the audience so pumped. And Daniel Bryan won the Intercontinental Championship. I was so happy. Right when he... The, the second he grabbed the title... I instantly went like this. Yes, yes, yes. And now, Daniel Bryan has won every single championship that WWE has. Well, besides Divas Championship, but you know what I'm talking about. He has now been a WWE Champion, World Heavyweight Champion, combined of a WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Tag Team Champion, United States Champion, and at WrestleMania, he won the Intercontinental Championship. Another good WrestleMania moment for him. So good for Daniel Bryan. I, I was kind of afraid that WWE might just drop the ball so like we focused on the big guy, Roman Reigns. <laughs> but I, I really enjoyed this ladder match. I really did. I really wanted this match to have a lot more time. Definitely wanted this match to have a lot more time. But I still enjoyed it. So overall, I'm giving that match a B. I enjoyed it. Next up was Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins. This was probably my most anticipated match for WrestleMania 31 coming into it. I was so excited for this match. I thought this match was going to seal the show. I thought they gave them enough fucking time that they could deliver hardcore. And they did with the time they had. I definitely think this match could have been a hell of a lot longer. It was about 15 minutes. And I'm like, oh, are you fucking joking? You should have had this been a 20-minute classic WrestleMania match. It was a great match. It was a great match. Don't don't make me think I'm just like completely saying this match is horse shit. I loved this match. Great back and forth chemistry between these two. They had great chemistry together. Randy Orton with the elbow pads back. I thought that was so fucking cool. Because <laughs> it reminded me of 2004 Orton. And I was having a good time watching this match. I was very entertained. They had very good chemistry. There were plenty of moments where I thought it was going to quickly end. I'm like, no, 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 no. Because Randy Orton hit with the RKO. Rollins kicked out. Um, Seth Rollins hit him with the curb stomp. Orton kicked out. Had great moments. Had definitely had great moments. But I do think I had a, should have had a little bit more time. Just a little bit. But, oh my god. The highlight of this match was the ending. This had a fucking awesome ending. Um, Seth Rollins about to hit the curb stomp. He jumps. Then Randy Orton lifts him up in the air. Rollins is flying. And then, boom! RKO! What a clever and awesome RKO. That is a WrestleMania RKO. That is an RKO that needs to be seen at a fucking WrestleMania. And Randy Orton did win the match. Which I was happy with because Randy Orton hasn't won at WrestleMania since WrestleMania 27. So good for him. He lost at 28 to Kane. Lost at 29 to The Shield. Lost at 30 to Daniel Bryan. He got one now. 
So good for him. And plus, like, gee, and plus, like, he hasn't won much at a Mania. Come to think about it, he won at twenty his debut, lost a twenty one to Taker. Didn't yeah, he lost a twenty two to Mysterio. He lost a twenty three in the Money in the Bank. He won in twenty four. Lost in twenty five. Won in twenty six. Won in twenty seven. Then twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. Didn't win. So yeah, good for Randy Orton. I don't know. That was really random. Now, I love this match. Definitely close to my favorite match of the night. And to give it a grade, I'm trying to think. Between a B plus, sort of a minus? Eh, I'm giving it a B plus. Because I do think that this should have had a lot more time. They did have great chemistry. And I thought it was a good match. And I thought it could have just been a good Raw match. But it was good for WrestleMania. It had a great moment at the end. And that's what I thought was probably one of the best parts about it. Next up was Triple H versus Sting. Now, I was really surprised that this was the third match of the regular show. And counting the counting the kickoff, this has been the fifth. But I, I thought this was going to be close to the main event. I honestly thought this was going to be the match right before Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. That's what I thought. And no. So I'm like, okay, we'll see what goes from here. And at the last minute, they switched this into a no disqualification, which I thought was good. I thought was good. And surprisingly, this match was awesome. I had a great time watching this match. I was kind of skeptical because, like, this, the build-up was absolute shit. Every build-up for all the matches were absolute garbage. But I had a great time with this match. I had a really, really good time watching this match. And, be, and I, th I think another reason why I was kind of skeptical was because of Sting absolutely sucking in matches. In TNA, he was the, the, his work in TNA was awful, so I was kind of scared. But I could really tell that Sting was trying to get more fit. He looked absolutely great, especially for his age. Sting looked awesome, and it was a really enjoyable match because, like, in the, like there's one part in the match, um, Sting is trying to do a Scorpion Deathlock on Triple H, and then DX comes out. Road Dog, Billy Gunn, and X Pac come out. I'm like. This is awesome. Then eventually later on the match, New World Order, Kevin Nash, Hulk Hogan, and and Scott Hall. I was about to say Razor and Ramon. But Scott Hall, fucking Hulk Hogan, fucking Kevin Nash, NWO and DX with Triple H, uh, with, them, with those teams in the corner, and Triple H and Sting in the ring. I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. Great action, great kickout moments, and out of nowhere, out of nowhere, I did not see this coming. He was a, like Sting was about to attack Triple H, and Adam, and then Shawn Michaels comes in. Bam! Sweet shit music. I was like, oh shit! Oh, I thought that was awesome. Shawn Michaels came in. He's back at a WrestleMania. Fuck yes! I was so happy to see Shawn Michaels, and I thought that was gonna be the end of the match, but Sting kicked out. There was more action going on. I was like, okay, is Triple H gonna win or is Sting gonna win? But like when I throughout the whole WrestleMania build up I thought it was gonna be Sting and um Sting had the baseball bat broke like the wood with Triple H's sledgehammer in it so it was like in half and so you were convinced okay Sting is gonna take this he's gonna hit it he's gonna finish it off and then Sting gets hit with like the the, the metal side of the sledgehammer Triple H hits him in the head pins him one two three Triple H won I was shocked I'll be honest I really thought that Sting was gonna be put over and it's funny because Sting lost his first match in WWE <laughs> at WrestleMania to Triple H. Uh-oh. <laughs> but the ending, I thought, was great. Sting and Triple H shook hands. That was awesome. It was because, like, like, the team of NWO, which, like, not really team because NWO had a huge feud with Sting and WCW, but it was cool that they were, like, having the same side because of whole WCW and WWE thing. Triple H... X-Pac, Road Dog, Billy Gunn, and Shawn Michaels on one side. And then Sting, Hogan, Hall, and Nash on the other. I thought that was a great moment. And I thought this was probably the best match of the night. I'll be honest. I think Triple H and Sting was probably the best match of the night. And um, I was really shocked by it. I was really shocked. I'm giving this an A-. minus. I was shocked that Triple H and Sting was the best match of the night. I really thought it was going to be Orton and Rollins. <laughs> I was really, like, 100% sure that it was going to be Orton and Rollins. But, oh well. And after that, it was the tag team Divas match. 
AJ and Paige versus the Bellas. I'll be honest, I wasn't paying too much attention. There's a couple cool moments that Paige did. I love how they kept on trying to attack AJ Lee so she could not get tagged in. I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. It's just a typical Divas tag team match. Um, the Divas matches at WrestleMania aren't too great. The one last year I thought was okay, and this one was just okay. It wasn't bad by any means. It wasn't great by any means, but it was still a good match. AJ and Paige won. I thought it was cool. Yeah, it was just it, it happened. Nothing really big. I'm probably going to give that a C. So, there, that match happened, I guess. Um, hopefully, they could push up the Divas more. And I, I'm, oh yeah, this, I think this happened after Triple H first day. There was a backstage segment where Daniel Bryan was being interviewed, and, he, and all these former Intercontinental Champions kept coming in. Pat Patterson, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, Ron Simmons came in and just said, damn, and walked away. <laughs> uh, I thought that was cool. Ricky Steamboat. Ric Flair, and last but certainly not least, Brett the Hitman Hart. I thought it was a great moment. I'm like, okay, maybe WWE is serious that they want to make the Intercontinental Championship prestigious again. Please do that. And Daniel Bryan's the man for it. Daniel Bryan will, will make that title big again. If there's anyone that you can count on WWE, it is Daniel Bryan. It is Daniel Bryan. No question. So good that they did that. After the tag team match with AJ and Paige, it, I, I think after that, I'm not sure if it was after this. No, was, yeah, this happened first. John Cena versus Rusev for the U.S. Championship. Now, we all knew that Cena was going to win. We all knew it. But I really didn't like this match by any means. I didn't think it was that entertaining because with a Cena match, it's usually predictable. You know what's going to happen. And I think a big reason why I liked John Cena versus Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania, because first of all, it's Bray Wyatt. I love Bray Wyatt. And second, because I there was some part of me that did think that Bray Wyatt was going to win. There there was no thought in my mind that Rusev was going to retain. I would have loved to see it, but I knew that they wouldn't do it. Cena was going to be the U.S. champion at the end of WrestleMania. We all knew it. It was an entertaining match. It was a good match for Mania. Had some cool moments. But Cena actually did one really, really cool thing in the match. What happened was, um, he kind of did a back thing on the... He kind of went from his back on, the, on, the, on like the ropes and then stunned Rusev. I thought that was so cool. And Rusev's entrance... Holy shit. That was such a cool, cool entrance. I loved it. It was Rusev comes in in a fucking tank. It was awesome. I loved it. And um, the match itself was good. Like, I loved how Rusev kind of knocked over Lana by accident. I thought that was funny. And her ankle was hurt. And that referees had to help her walk. <laughs> it was funny. Cena hit him with the AA. And he pinned him 1-2-3. And Rusev has finally been defeated. Good WrestleMania moment. Um, at WrestleMania, of course, it was the time for Rusev's streak to end. Cena's the new US champ. Cool. C+. Plus. There you go. <laughs> um, then, this was what I thought was completely stupid. There was a stupid segment that, I don't know what it said, please welcome Stephanie McMahon and Triple H, the authority. Why? <laughs> Just why? Why have a stupid segment with the authority? They were just coming out, so I'm like, okay, who's gonna fucking come out? None of here. If there's some more! Why? Rock, get the fuck out! <laughs> this was such a stupid and pointless segment. If it meant for Triple H and The Rock to have like a match, I don't know, maybe at Extreme Rules or SummerSlam, then maybe. They didn't do, I don't think it's gonna lead up to anything. They just had them, they just had The Rock. Say a few things. Stephanie McMahon insulted him. He walked down the ring, brought in a female UFC fighter to, to attack on Stephanie McMahon, and she mostly beat up on Triple H. Rock did some <laughs> fucking fake punches. You could clearly tell those were fake. And oh my god, I fucking hated this segment. The Rock had no point in being there. There was no need for The Rock to be there. No need. No need for that promo. Yeah, there, it could have been cool and all, but save that for the Raw after WrestleMania, for fuck's sake. Just have us more refocused on a match. That could have brought more time to Orton versus Rollins. Sting versus Triple H. The latter match. 
all the matches. They could have stayed at more time if they didn't have the stupid fucking segment. I know some people thought it was cool because, well, it's The Rock, but I thought it was completely useless. I thought it was completely pointless to have The Rock come in for the stupid segment at WrestleMania. I thought it was stupid. I don't care if, like, you disagree with me. You can disagree with me. I don't care. You have a right to your own opinion. I respect your opinion. I thought it was stupid. D. <sighs> I hated that moment. I was like... Just continue. Just go on with it. Next was The Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt. I was actually having some high hopes for this match. So I'm like, yeah, I know Undertaker and Lesnar wasn't that great last year. But this one, but this match had a lot better build up for sure because, well, Bray Wyatt did a fantastic job carrying this feud. He carried this entire feud. Undertaker was never there, which I can understand because Undertaker is now 50. And I'm not even sure the Undertaker even wanted to come back for WrestleMania after the streak ending. But I think they just need something for Bray Wyatt, so putting the Undertaker in there, I thought was a good step. And it was actually, uh, not awesome, but a really good match. I had a great time watching this match. And this was one of my favorite matches of the night. And now, Undertaker literally looked like him in 2004. I thought that was so cool. And I was really entertained because like there were some cool parts when the when um, Bray Wyatt was about to like uh, there was like an awesome shot where it just was focused on Bray Wyatt's face. He was about to hit Sister Abigail. Then I thought that was really really cool. And then when Bray Wyatt was doing the was doing the Exorcist type of walk, and then Undertaker sat up. Such a cool WrestleMania moment. I thought that they yeah, had a little burp there, but I thought that was cool. And a kick out of the tombstone, a kick out of Sister Abigail, and then. And uh, then um, Bray Wyatt came close to hitting a second sister, Abigail. Undertaker countered, pushed Bray Wyatt over. Second tombstone, one, two, three. Undertaker wins. I'm happy. I liked this match. I thought it was really good. I do think that maybe... If maybe if Bray Wyatt had beat John Cena last year, then maybe it wouldn't have been as bad as him losing to The Undertaker as well. Because, like, now Bray Wyatt's never won at WrestleMania. This is second in a row. His second, the second WrestleMania, zero and two. He has not won a match yet. Poor Bray Wyatt. Hopefully, he will next year. I want him to win next year. Whoever he has a match with, Bray Wyatt should win. He better win. I'll be really mad next year's WrestleMania if he doesn't win. I'll probably be ranting about it. But I had a really good time watching this match. Probably close to a B, B plus, maybe the tiniest bit to a B plus. Honestly, I thought this match was really entertaining. And it shocked me a lot. And next came the main event that I did not give a shred of a shit about. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Still, Roman Reigns, you did not deserve the main event of Mania. You fucking shitbag. <laughs> I hate Roman Reigns so much. But anyway, um, but I was also more happy because, okay... Because recently we had found out that Brock Lesnar had re-signed with WWE for, I think, another three years. So there's more of a chance that Lesnar was going to retain. So I'm like, okay, please have Lesnar win. And this was fun. I had a good time watching it. You wonder why? Because Brock Lesnar was beating the shit out of Roman Reigns for probably 90 to 85% of this match. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, because I really, really liked it. a really fun time. Watch Roman Reigns get the shit beat out of him. Because that's what he is. A piece of shit. Ah, <laughs> uh, it was fun. It was fun. And, like, because sometimes Roman Reigns was about to get there. He was at the apron. And he was about to fall out of the ring. And so he was, like, kneeing Brock Lesnar in the face. Trying to get him out. Brock Lesnar moved back. And then, boom! And Roman Reigns just fucking flew down. I'm like, ha, <laughs> Roman Reigns, you are fucking screwed, you piece of shit. And then, of course, Roman Reigns had this comeback. He had a Superman punch, another Superman punch. Brock Lesnar wouldn't get down. Finally, he did another Superman punch. Brock Lesnar was down. I was terrified that Roman Reigns was going to win. I was like, no, no. He speared him. And then, like, he didn't pin him. I'm like, okay, maybe it'll get him a moment. They'll kick out. They did two, two, they did another spear. And I'm like, oh, shit, no. No, one. No, two. No, kick out. Oh, thank God. Woo. I was so relieved. And then out of nowhere, then like not out of nowhere, but um, then this next part, they're out of the ring, 
Roman Reigns pushes Lesnar to the pole and it starts bleeding out his head. Blood starts dripping on the on the mat. I'm like, oh shit, blood! <laughs> yeah. And I'm ending this grade off from here. B, to be my or close to a B minus, the lowest of a B. The reason why I'm ending that off here was because Seth Rollins interfered in this match. He ran out with his Money in the Bank contract, cashed it in, and, met, and officially called it a triple threat. Oh, so he curb stopped Brock Lesnar. He was about to curb stop him again. Brock Lesnar picked him up for the F5. I'm like, oh shit, is Rollins going to lose the contract win? And then Roman Reigns spears Brock Lesnar. And then Rollins kicks down Roman Reigns, curb stops Roman Reigns, and pins Roman Reigns. And Seth Rollins is our new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. The reason why I made that separate segment because I'm so happy that Seth Rollins is the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And he didn't even pin the champion. He didn't pin Lesnar. He pinned Roman Reigns, which made it even fucking better. Yeah, Roman Reigns, be pinned. Be put down, you little piece of shit. You suck. You didn't deserve a main event at WrestleMania. Seth Rollins deserved a hell of a lot more than you do, and he did. Seth Rollins is the new WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Woo! I am so happy. Good for you, Seth Rollins. I've been supporting Seth Rollins for seven years, watching him in Ring of Honor, other independent circuits, and watching him in FCW in the developmental area, watching him in NXT. He debuted on The Shield. I was so happy to see him on the main roster. He won the tag team titles. He was in this huge big group. Okay, he's going to be pushed. He did. He turned on The Shield, won money in the bank. Okay, he's going to be the next top star. And he won the biggest title that you can win in the main event of WrestleMania. Congratulations, Seth Rollins. You have deserved it for all your hard work for so many years in the professional wrestling business. I am so happy for you. You deserved it. Definitely not more than that football-playing, rock-related prick. And and honestly, what I'm more happy about this with, this is going to lead to Lesnar probably turning face, which I'm really, really happy with. I feel like, the, uh, honestly, for my prediction, I honestly thought that Brock Lesnar would beat Reigns, then Heyman would turn his back on him, hit Brock Lesnar with something, and then Seth Rollins would cash in, and Seth Rollins and Paul Heyman would team up. I thought that would happen. But either way, Seth Rollins is champion, and I'm really, really happy about that. A for Rollins winning. Just a full-on A for Rollins just winning. I thought that was awesome, especially because he pinned Roman Reigns. That got the A, not the A. Minus. <laughs> I'm trying to do it, but I'm failing. But overall, I had a good time with this WrestleMania. Yeah, I do think that the matches could have been a little bit longer. You could have given them a lot more time, especially with um, the ladder match. Um, Randy Orton and Seth Rollins and The Undertaker and Bray Wyatt. I thought those could have had a lot more time. The segment with Triple H and Stephanie and The Rock, and I can't remember her name. I'm sorry. The, she's a UFC fighter. She's very, very good. I've seen her matches, a couple of them. But... She, that segment was completely stupid. I thought it was completely pointless. It ruined a lot of time for matches. And that was a big letdown for me. And I really thought the matches could have been longer. Some of the moments, like, I didn't really love Cena and Rusev. I didn't love the Divas match. Some parts in the ladder match, I thought it could have been paced a lot better. And But still, it sort of felt like a WrestleMania more than I thought it did. I had a good time watching this WrestleMania. No, it was no WrestleMania 17 by any means. But it was a decent WrestleMania. I'm going to be giving WrestleMania 31 a B minus. I was shocked by that. I'm giving it a B minus, probably close to a yeah, no a B, a B. I'm giving it a B because I think I gave Fastlane a B minus. I'm giving that Fastlane a C plus now after watching it again. But I really enjoyed WrestleMania, and I'm glad I did because I really had the lowest of low expectations. It was better than WrestleMania 27. Yeah, you see that little poster over there? You shitty WrestleMania? You suck. <laughs> but anyway, that was my review of WrestleMania 31. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'm Lucas Stringer. I'll see you guys later.